Nets have played some really exciting games down the stretch. However, I think this is one they'll look back on and believe it didn't have to be this exciting. The Nets had taken complete control of this game. And then midway through that third quarter, Sarah, if they had a 14-point lead, they seem to very obviously take their foot off the gas and get careless with the basketball. Well, and I think if we go back to the Houston win, a lot of the things that both the players and Kenny Atkinson were talking about was the compete level, the energy, the focus, the type of spirit that they brought. And they were talking about the ways in which they need to build chemistry, acclimate themselves to one another, both on the defensive end and offensive end. But they said flat out, sometimes it just comes down to competing harder. And, and that's what they let go in that third quarter. And regardless of what what a team looks like with these Detroit Pistons who were missing a, a bunch of key players through injury. These are professionals and they're players that are going to come out and they're going to try and show that they deserve time on the floor and they were productive. They figured out how to really work that pick and roll against the Nets defense that allowed them to score with some ease towards the end of that third quarter and into the fourth quarter. And so a, a disappointing loss for the Nets. It is still early, but this is a very good learning experience about some things bigger than just the X's and O's on the floor. Now, Spencer Dinwiddie really struggled in the third quarter. In the fourth, he started to find his rhythm, find the two-man game with DeAndre Jordan as he rewarded Kenny Atkinson's confidence. But we didn't see Karis LeVert in the fourth quarter down the stretch. What did you think of that? Uh, you know what? I think with all of this, there's going to be a feel for Kenny Atkinson and the coaching staff of who they feel is working well together. And we know oftentimes it's not just about what's happening offensively, but also defensively who they want on. They played last night, and there were some heavy minutes from a lot of the players. So you don't know what factors in at this point yet to the decision-making of the rotations of who's on the floor. But I do think in this early part of the season, Kenny Atkinson and his staff are still figuring out exactly who it is that they want on the floor together in some of these critical times. Yeah, obviously a lot of frustrating losses here, but early new group. We're seeing some of the manifestations of that chemistry. Good experiences for this team. You look at the schedule. Nets have New Orleans at home Monday. Feels like a very big game for Brooklyn before they head out west. Well, it, and that's where, you know, it, all of these all of a sudden become a little bit bigger. And, it, you know, it's, it's something where you can talk about the early part of the season and it's still a work in progress and learning proce process, but the records matter. And in terms of improving matters. So it's not just about the wins and losses, but are we getting better each and every night with each and every game? And so New Orleans is going to come in. They play fast pace. They got a lot of weapons despite the fact that Zion Williamson is not playing. There are a lot of capable players on that team, hungry and young as well for wins. So it's going to be a heavy matchup for this Nets team before they head off on the road. All right, the Nets will turn the page on this one in Detroit. Get ready to take on the Pelicans in Brooklyn on Monday as we send it back to you in the studio, Chris.